All right, welcome back to Empire of the Sun. And um, as promised, I did play the Mahatma Gandhi card, and I launched, uh, I uh, activated the uh, uh, South HQ here, and activated three units. I know I could activate four, because that's one plus three. I'm losing this as an ops card on only one battle. With only one battle, hack, which is Rangoon. Uh, so one plus three is four, but I can only activate three because the activations do activate units in Burma. And remember, there was a rule. Remember, there's a rule that says if I don't control, if I don't play the River Kwai card, the bridge over the River Kwai card, just building this uh, this uh, transportation route here, or and I don't call control Rangoon, which I don't, then I have I take a minus one penalty on all attacks, on all activations uh, in Burma. I, my, my headquarters that, that activates, it takes a minus one penalty. So I can only activate three, not four. So what I do is I activate these two guys that came from this hex, activate this area to provide air cover for the attack. All right? So at this point, we're going to see if the allies react, and they do. Okay, remember that he has to roll a five or less, and his DRM... He has a minus two DRM, enjoys a minus two DRM because I I entered his zone of control. Uh, not zone of control, excuse me, the Azoi. The uh, allied Azoi from this air unit, the AVG, and this air unit, the SEAC. I, I, I entered that, and so because of that, he gets a minus two DRM. So we are seven or less. Seven or less, should he, he, sees, he will see this coming. So he says OC5 minus two DRM. He rolls a zero, which is a zero, not a ten. So he sees us coming. He's able to react. So he reacts. Okay, now he reacts by activating the SEAC. One plus three has four units. And so he can activate four units. He activates that air unit. Okay, and he activates this air unit. Okay, he activates that air unit. Okay, and he moved it. He shouldn't have moved it uh, right away, but it doesn't really matter. But, oh, and he activates this unit. Okay. And, um, okay. Huh, what else did he activate? One plus three, four. One, two, three. Okay. Hmm. He may have, I think he, maybe he missed one? I don't know. All right. So anyway, he activates these units, and then he, the fight here, in, single, in uh, Rangoon. Uh, okay. So he says that these guys will engage there. All right. So air naval combat, okay. The Japs only have eight. The Allies have forty-two. How do they have forty-two? If you count, this guy activates. This guy activates. This guy activates, and he also has this guy and this guy reacting. Okay. So seventeen plus six, twenty-three. Twenty-three, thirty-seven. Thirty-seven plus two is forty-two. So okay, so he has forty-two factors against my. Poor, lonely, eight factors here. And you might say, well, why did I do that? I did it that way because I just needed air cover for my guys. I knew he was going to be able to react with overwhelming force. And so I didn't want to lose my valuable air units. I don't want to use this air unit. If I'm going to lose an air unit, I might really lose this guy. A weak air unit that I can replace because he doesn't have a yellow dot. Remember, the yellow dot unit cannot be replaced. So I could not have replaced the 22nd Air Division. I could not have replaced this guy because they're both yellow dot units. So what is to be used is this 8102 replaceable air unit. Okay. So he rolls for that the air naval battle and he rolls a 9-2. So I rolled a 9, which is a critical hit. And he rolls a 2. A 2 for him is a half quarter result. So 42 divided by 4. Okay, so the G, okay. 42 divided by 4 is, uh, what is that? 42 divided by 4 is 10, uh, 11. I think that's 11 factors. 11 factors because, remember, all all fractures are rounded up. So he does 11 factors of damage. So he's able to flip this guy down here. He's able to flip the air unit and damage it, but not destroy it completely. He would have needed 20 hits to do that, and he didn't. He wasn't able to do that. So he flips that. Okay. And then I am able to flip eight of his. Okay. The the, the critical hit doesn't really matter because uh, unfortunately um, 
yeah, it, I, the critical is it is important because I don't, I did not hit him with enough damage to flip more than one unit. So in that one unit um, is this Exeter. So I went and flipped him. Okay, and so now the the, the combat takes place. The the land combat takes place. So here I have Japanese is 28 against Allied 12. That's this guy against these two guys. All right. And unfortunately, we did not roll well. Okay, he rolls. He rolled a one. Nine. So he rolled a. The almost the complete opposite of what we rolled in air naval. So I rolled a one because I'm the attacker. I always roll first, and he rolled a nine. Okay, so. That's a half result. I rolled a half result. So that's 20 plus 18, 38. Half result means that uh, 19 hits. So this guy gets flipped. Okay, this guy gets flipped. The uh, the Indian guy, this guy, and the Indian guy gets flipped. And in return, he fires and hits me for twice his damage. See that? Right, right? Uh, and that really sucks because that really hurts. Okay, so he's uh, times two. And that was probably the only way he could have won this battle. Because then I hit him, he hits me back with 24 hits, and he's able to flip these two guys. He's able to flip those two. Okay, 14 hits for you, 24 for me. So, this guy gets flipped once for um, 14, um, uh, 14 hits. Uh, so, he's able to flip me twice. Okay, alright, and I lose the battle, unfortunately. What a horrible, horrible way to lose the battle, because... The only way I could have not have, I think the only way I could have lost this battle, really, was by rolling, well, if I had, yeah, if I had not, if I had somehow gotten away with uh, uh, more than a half result, you know, I would have been able to pull it off, I think. But it is what it is, and, uh, and then if he hadn't hit me with twice, the nine is what hurt the most, because what happens in, in a, a land battle, is that unlike a ground in the naval battle, a naval battle you determine who wins by whoever has the most factors left at the end of the game, at the end of the battle. In a land battle, it's not that way. In a land battle, the loser who loses the most steps, the guy who loses the most steps is the loser. In my case, I'm the loser because I lost two steps. One step here, one step here. He lost one step. So because of that, the attack was repelled and I was here. The thing that hurt the most is that he was able to hit me for double damage. If he had not hit me for double damage, if he had hit me for just single damage, 12, then what would have happened is that, oh, okay, well, maybe not so good then. He would have, uh, we both would have lost the step, okay, that I would still lose the fight, unfortunately, okay. So, okay, but it was, a, I thought it was a good shot. I mean, you know, 20, I had the 38 factors as a good shot, a good possibility of destroying this Indian core and I would have been able to move in and I could take over right too. Even if I had to take losses in the meantime. But so unfortunately that's what happened during the combat. I lost the combat, I was not able to to uh, capture Rangoon and he was able to repel my attack. So now comes uh, his post battle movement. So he returns his air air units where they came from. Okay. Uh, and I flip his Exeter, okay, okay, so, and that's it, um, the next, uh, the next, uh, not card play is his, he has to play uh, a card to, um, for his turn, all right, so we'll see what happens then.